Well, we are less than two months away from Election Day. And as we get closer, uh, one of the things a lot of journalists are doing is taking a look uh, both at Mitt Romney and at President Obama. President Obama's record, of course, made up of promises made, promises broken, and some promises that seem to be forgotten. One of those promises was a full criminal investigation into big banks on Wall Street for the role many of them played in the economic collapse and more specifically in the widespread subprime mortgage crisis that contributed to millions of foreclosures and an economy that four years later is still on shaky ground. In his State of the Union address this year, President Obama announced the creation of a mortgage fraud task force, a group that would hold those responsible accountable. And in February, there was a settlement between the government and some of those big banks, and the president once again mentioned this crime-fighting group, headed up by New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, and what that group would be doing. This settlement also protects our ability to further investigate the practices that caused this mess, and this is important. The Mortgage Fraud Task Force I announced in my State of the Union address retains its full authority to aggressively investigate the packaging and selling of risky mortgages Led, that led to this crisis. Well, let's talk about how aggressive this investigation has actually been with William Black, associate economics professor for the University of Missouri of Kansas City School of Law. Hey there. Uh, give me a little bit of background on this. I know that you have um, kind of worked in this field before. How do these investigations work? Is it normal for it to take as long as it's taking several months to even, you know, get an office or launch a website, not to mention actually investigate these crimes? No, I mean, what was uh, the norm before was during the savings and loan crisis, which is one seventieth as large in terms of both losses and fraud as this crisis. In that crisis, we got over a thousand felony convictions just in cases designated as major by the federal government. And that understates the degree of prioritization because we created the top 100 list of roughly the worst 600 frauds, uh, and virtually all of them were prosecuted. We had a 90 percent conviction rate. To do that, our agency, the regula banking regulatory agency, the Office of Thrift Supervision, made over 30,000 criminal referrals. Flash forward to this crisis. Same agency, Office of Thrift Supervision, makes zero criminal referrals. And let's put this in perspective. You said 30,000 criminal referrals. Uh, this particular, uh, the mortgage crisis, um, has 55 people working on it, whereas when you, when you were working, there were 1,000 people working on it. Um, we can even look at, you know, the Roger Clemens doping scandal. There were 93 investigators. So talk a little bit about the timing and the number of these investigators and what it says about the government's priorities here. Okay, first you're correct that uh, in the savings and loan debacle, at peak, there were 1,000 FBI agents. There are only about 2,500 FBI agents who do white collar crime at all. So a huge percentage of the total agents worked the savings and loan debacle to get that 1,000 felony convictions. In the current crisis, as recently as fiscal year 2007, there were only 120 FBI agents assigned nationwide. They were in little groups of two and three in regional offices, and they didn't investigate anything major. They didn't look at any of the major institutions. So you're saying and, the number of FBI agents even assigned to, to white collar crimes this, these days, you know, in the current day, ha has dropped, ha has been cut uh, exponentially? Why is that? Well, the first thing that happened was the 9-11 attacks, uh, and they transferred all kinds of FBI agents to national security. They found that the FBI couldn't infiltrate al-Qaeda, but it could follow the money, and the experts in following the money are the white-collar folks. So they took 500 of the best FBI agents who do white-collar and transferred them to national security. The next thing that happened, of course, uh, you know, uh, just a month later was Enron. And so when the famous FBI warning came in September 2004, note how early that was, 2004, that warned that there was an epidemic of mortgage fraud and warned that it would cause a financial crisis if it were not contained. Well, what happened is the FBI agents that were assigned to white collar and not transferred to national security 
were overwhelmingly working on the Enron era cases. So there was really no one there. By 2006, um, you talked about this being a subprime crisis. It's overwhelmingly a liar's loans crisis. Liar's loans are when you don't uh, verify the borrower's income, for example. And the studies show that 90% of liar's loans were fraudulent. And the studies show that this was overwhelmingly lenders and their agents who put the fraud in the liar's loans. Despite the FBI warnings, the industry massively increased the number of liar's loans. It increased it by over 500 percent between 2003 and 2006. By 2006, roughly 40 percent of all mortgage loans made in the United States were liar's loans. Wow. That means over 2 million fraudulent loans per year being made by the lenders with 120 agents to look after it. I want to play, uh, um, William, uh, something that, that Elizabeth Warren said last week at the Democratic National Convention. Warren, of course, the Democratic uh, candidate for Senate in Massachusetts and formerly headed up the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, take a listen. I'm here tonight to talk about hardworking people, people who get up early, stay up late, cook dinner and help out with homework, people who can be counted on to help their kids, their parents, their neighbors, and a lady down the street whose car broke down, people who work their hearts out but are up against a hard truth. The game is rigged against them. Let's talk about that hard truth. I mean, uh, here's Elizabeth Warren, a, a major uh, face in national politics these days, uh, putting this on the table like that. Do you, why aren't more people saying this? Well, we have both major parties trying to downplay the role of fraud in finance because finance is the leading source of financing for both of the parties. Uh, they provide the massive campaign contributions. Uh, and as a result, uh, nothing seriously has gotten done uh, in compared to the thousand elites convicted in the savings and loan debacle. Again, one seventieth the losses, one seventieth the fraud. You have zero, absolutely zero of the elite white collar types who drove this financial crisis. Uh, have been uh, convicted. And indeed, this new task force that you, uh, you know, the lead in to this discussion uh, is not even assigned to look at mortgage fraud. It's assigned, and nor is it assigned to look at foreclosure fraud, uh, where that occurred more than 100,000 felonies per year by several of the largest banks in the United States. All of that was negotiated away for complete impunity. The only thing they were supposedly going to look at, this task force of 40 to 50 folks, most of whom were already assigned to dealing with these cases, so it was essentially no new uh, addition, uh, was uh, the sale of derivatives and the purchase uh, of these loans in what we call the secondary market. And even there, they have not issued a, simil, a, a single criminal subpoena for information. So real in quick, William, I mean, we're almost out of time. How do we prevent these future crises? I mean, uh, settling with large banks for large sums of millions of dollars, um, that's not happening. Uh, how do we make sure this doesn't happen again? Well, you have to prosecute these folks. That means that you, uh, Holder, Attorney General Holder, needs to resign. He needs to be replaced by a real prosecutor, uh, and it needs to be a national priority. The working group doesn't even have membership of the banking regulatory agencies, who are absolutely essential if you're going to have any effective prosecution. We made it as an agency our top priority to deal with these frauds. Uh, currently, the regulators give them a complete pass. Right. That is a recipe for disaster, and the next disaster will be worse. Money talks, but the threat of jail would speak louder if it happened. Uh, William Black, associate economics professor for the University of Missouri, Kansas City School of Law.